the word defibrillator for today where we're trusting God for a word from within the word. And we're looking at Luke 9, 23. Let's see if we can put it into context. Saying the Son of Man, this is uh, verse 22. Saying the Son of Man must suffer many things and be deliberately disapproved and repudiated and rejected on the part of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be put to death on the third day, be raised again. And he said to all, if any person wills to come after me, let him deny himself, disown himself, forget, lose sight of himself and his own interests, refuse and give up himself and take up his cross daily and follow me, cleave steadfastly to me, confess form holy to me my example in living and in and if need be in dying also seriously yeah it's seriously now firstly you have to have a spiritual death where you give and say goodbye that's why uh, we do baptism where we get totally immersed it's basically a manifestation of what's happened the old man is going so there you are standing um, outside the water, you be a testimony, and then you go and you get baptized, and then you come up as a new creation. The water is symbolic of the blood of Jesus that washes away your sins, and the old man is going, and the new man comes out. And that's a basically a physical testimony of what you've done in your heart. So there you denying and saying about goodbye to your old things and the old way of doing things. It also says that you need to forsake your mother and your father and everybody else. And you go, come on, really? How is that? What happens if I need to minister? Well, no, it basically means this, that Jesus says, if you want to follow me, it's 100% me. If I say left, it has to be left. If I say right, it has to be right. Sure, you can go seek counsel as to what you need to do uh, in, in order to accomplish that. But you need to be listening to what Christ says and Christ says alone. There's no compromise whatsoever. And let the dead bury the dead is also used. And so, say I can't even go to a funeral. Well, if I need you to do something for me, my goings are of the Lord. Therefore, I cannot understand my own way. And Jesus says, you can't be my disciple if you do not forsake all. And yeah, it's saying this is, is that if you want to, live my life you must live my life as what i've been through you've got to be re uh, be prepared to it doesn't necessarily say you will be but if it happens you've got to understand it's going to be because of me because of who jesus christ is and he's what he represents and if you are an example of jesus christ guess what's going to happen you are also going to be judged in that same manner now, the nice thing is, is when they gave uh, the Christians titles, uh, when they were doing a census in Rome, and a Roman soldier had to identify what this people group was, he looked at Jesus' followers and said, well, these guys are as Jesus Christ. They are the splitting image. They are the example of Christ himself. And what we're going to do is we're going to call them Christians, which is little Christ or as Christ. So the, the early Christians' examples were, it was exactly that. They knew that these people who followed Christ would follow Christ unto death. And all the disciples, who was, I think, was only John that d didn't um, die for the faith. And he lived to be an old age. I could be corrected on that one. But you have to be prepared. It's all or nothing. There is zero compromise. And the compromise is a very dangerous word because compromise basically means you lose what you're trying to gain when you compromise. That's what compromise is. And yeah, he's saying, he said to all, if any person wills to come after me, let him deny himself, disown himself, forget, lose sight of himself and his own interests, refuse and give up himself and take up his cross daily. Now that cross daily is so exciting for me. Because Jesus taking up the cross was rescuing the world. Even though it was a tough day, it was a necessary day, but it did excite him and ignite him. You have to have so much passion to be able to go through what he went through, focus, determination, and purpose. It was a good day for Christ because he was going to overcome 
what lay before him at the cross, and his cross was to deliver the world from sin and to restore them back to the Father. That is what pushed him through. That's what helped him stay focused. Many times when we say, take up your cross, it's like, oh my gosh, I really feel this labor. No, no. What Jesus said to you to, it's those who are weary and heavy laden, come to me and I'll give you rest. Rest, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That what Jesus yokes us to will be easy and what he burdens us to will be light. We will be able to carry it. When you see an ox in the threshing floor, they never put him in a place where it's going to destroy him or harm him or hurt him. He has the strength and the ability and the yoke is designed specifically for him. So when God says, take up your cross, it's, you'll do it. You, you have the ability and you've got what, you're, what it takes to do it. That's what happened to Jesus in the garden. He, he said to the Father, take this cup from me. I don't think I have the ability to do this. And he said, well, you know what, Father, your will be done. I'm going to put my faith in what you think of me, Father. That's what I'm going to do. So when we're taking up our cross, it is a good thing. The results are fantastic. They are rewarding. They are satisfying. I, Jesus has no regrets. I can guarantee you, when he looks at you and I, no regrets whatsoever. And we need to follow him steadfastly, stick to him, conform wholly to my example in living, and if need be, in dying also. My word. Heavenly Father, what an amazing word this morning. Just that part about taking up the cross. It's not something that we cannot do. It's not something that is beyond us. Your word says that you'll never put us in a position that we cannot handle without providing a way out. And Father, your son asked for that way out. And Father, your response was, my boy, you can do this. You can get through this. We are here to fulfill a purpose and we are designed for that purpose. I thank you, Father, that you make that purpose loud and clear, Father. That we can see it, that we take up our cross knowing that this is what we will carry. Knowing it will be light and we will be able to do this. And at the end of our day, look back and smile and say, it is finished. Father, may we stay focused on what we are here to do in our own purpose and our destiny and that we can take that cross up daily and follow Jesus, Jesus Christ's example that we lose our sight of ourselves because sometimes Father we are so focused on ourselves that we don't realize that we have all that is needed to fulfill what you've called us to we thank you for your grace and your mercy and your forgiveness and your goodness in Jesus name Amen.